luminary in that world. He was a big Jewish actor in the Jewish theater. Wasn't it both Mr. and Mrs. Tomaszewski? It you was. correct, Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bessie, that's, Bessie. That's Tom enough culture for tonight. That's, <laughs> Betty, <laughs> Daddy was the, that's it. Just had it. Uh, uh, Max in the Yiddish theater. Didn't your father Betty. perform in the Yiddish theater? Yes. Yes, Ross said, said yeah. Stephen just left. I told him to stay and talk to oh, you. Yeah. But he didn't. No, seriously, Betty's father, Max Hirsch, performed in the Yiddish theater. Yes, yes. he did. In the Lyric Theater. He had so he many had back people. then. Huh? Molly Pika and Manasha Skolnick. Uh, but that my father didn't get that far here. Yeah. He got as far as coming coming to Charleston and being a big shot. It, it was a big fish in a little in a little town. <laughs> and not a little fish in a big town. Yeah, That's well, my father, I, I agree. My father went with Molly Pecon. I have a movie with my father with Molly Pecon, but he was just a, an extra. And it was in 1936 in Warsaw. That's where she made her movie. And the movie is called Yiddle Mitten Fiedel. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You've heard, you know that movie. It's a classic. It's a classic. Yes, I, I have it. Still, yeah, me too. Molly Pecan, middle with the fiddle, and oh, I and love who, it. And who, and who with the drums? Oh, I don't remember. Yiddle mitten fiddle, Ari mitten bass. The bass, that's it. Boss. You it. Right. <laughs> in Mirvel, in Mirvel, singing in mitten de gas. We will right. sing in the, on the street. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, Anna. Hi, Red. Hi, Mike. I remember um, was, I was always told that when Menasha Skolnick would come out on the stage, if he was doing something, you know, like one-on-one -on -one comedy or whatever, he'd come out on the stage and he'd look around the audience like this and says, No, the can't It's me, Menasha. <laughs> yeah, M M Menasha Skolnick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember Menasha Skolnick. You know, that would be a great idea if we could, I don't know how to do it technically. I am really no knowledge, but I'm I'm sure some of you do. We can have a little bit of a of a, a they can show a performance of a Yiddish skit, a funny skit. I can skit. find it and get it on there. Yeah, we can do really? it. Really? Okay. Uh, I, I will take. I, I will take. We say in men's club. I'll take an action item on that one. <laughs> so I, I went last summer. I went to Yiddish camp, and I was in the theater group. And um, Mottel Didner was our director who's the, he works with uh, Folkspina. And I actually have the script of a, uh, of a short little play in Yiddish, which is hysterically funny. So, so maybe you should put it on for us. Can you put it on for us? That'd be can great. I put it on? Uh, yeah, what? yeah, read it. No, no, read it. Well, I, I, can't, do, I can't do it tonight because I don't no, no, have no. But no. what, what we could actually, I, get, I suppose if there's a way, if we could disseminate it to everybody and we could, and we could do a reading, we could take different parts I, maybe. I, I think it's a great idea. If you know how to do that. It's a share screen. Yeah, but okay. I mean, I, I don't want to get in trouble. Like, I mean, is that like copyright infringement? I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> As, no, you're no, not selling not, it. You're not making right. profit on it. <laughs> All right, let me, uh, uh, let me interrupt. For educational purposes. Sure. I don't want to speak. Let me interrupt. Uh, Mike, you want to introduce the program tonight? Yeah, let me introduce it. I was trying to get somebody on. They, can't, they, they couldn't get on with the link. They need to have the ID. I'll have to go get that for them in a minute. Well, thank you. Thank you for all joining tonight. Um, this is, I don't even remember how many sessions we have had. This is our sixth, maybe? No, and, uh, and so I think it's uh, this, our this, this group is being sponsored by the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. There's a number of groups that are getting together like this, uh, weekly, monthly, bi-weekly like we are. Um, and uh, what, uh, what we've been doing is uh, chatting on different subjects. And uh, I'm going to let uh, Joe and, uh, and Alan take over. We have kind of a way we want to introduce new people and then we want to hear some stories and uh, and then we want to continue where we left off last week with uh, some of the some of the food and possibly we could move on so Joe you want to you want to yes 
Uh, so I what, we're, mentioned. what we'd Hi, like Joe. to do is if, um, I can't see everybody, but if you're joining us for the first time, we'd like to uh, recognize you and uh, we'd like for you to tell us a little bit about first where you're calling from, uh, a little bit of your, your uh, Yiddish or your family background and where you learned your Yiddish. Uh, and uh, then we'll go from there. So you can e either raise your hand, Mike, if, uh, uh, and we can uh, tune you in or turn you out. Uh, Dan Hammer, I see your hand is up. Uh, and if you could uh, tell us uh, in Yiddish as much as, as you can, that would be wonderful. The Ken Zugan Abyssala in Yiddish, Asaka in Yiddish, Busta Ken in uh, our Leiden would, uh, would be nice. Uh, no, I don't speak Yiddish. I'm Dan Hammer uh, from Temple Israel Center in White Plains, New York. Al Davis, hello, and Mike. Good to see you. Uh, my, my parents were first born, and they were both born in Brooklyn, first generation American. And they uh, only spoke Yiddish when they didn't want my sister and I to understand what they were saying. And we used to say, Stupid. speak English, speak English. If we were smarter, we would have paid attention a little more. But you know, in those days, Yiddish was a dying language. Uh, you know, we grew up surrounded by that, by uh, uh, my grandfather. We'd hear him speak Yiddish sometimes, or my wife's grandparents. But we couldn't talk it, but we could understand select words. Uh, you know, I'm, I was in uh, retail. And Yiddish was very prevalent. And I had a, an Italian boss one time that wanted to know what were all these Yiddish words so he could understand the boss. <laughs> the, the, the funny thing about uh, when Mike's email came in, I'm also on the National uh, Yiddish Book Center in Amherst, Massachusetts, that website. So every so often I've attended their discussions. and. The last email came in right underneath the Yiddish Center. And I was a little confused, but I saw Yiddish. I saw Mike Mills, which was the name I, I recognized, of course, from the FJMC. So I sent him a little note. <laughs> I was still confused, but I'm glad to be with my FJMC brethren and, and related folks. You were confused because you didn't know he was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> so that so that that's it. The long and the short of it. I always wanted to learn to speak Yiddish. Uh, I've never really made the effort, even though the last five months I've had nothing to do. Uh, <laughs> but I, I I did read the story of uh, Adam Lansky from the Yiddish Book Center, which just like perked me up again. It's going to work out. Thank you, uh, Elaine. How about you telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, I kind of did. Um, I grew up with a mother and a grandmother who spoke Yiddish. And again, it was one of those things that the children just didn't know about, you know? It was their code, their secret language. And now that I'm older, and even, even from before, I'm just curious. And I want, it's nostalgic. I want to hear it. And Elaine is calling us from... Charleston area? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. Who else Anna. is new tonight? Eva? Anna. Anna. Anna? Anna Leharp? Leharp? Leharp. You've met her. Huh? You met me at Shirley. You met her. Was I dressed? She visited us a few years ago. It was a few years ago. Uh, Oh, yes, I do. Rick. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about, about yourself, Anna. Where are you from? Calling and... Okay, I'm from Cincinnati, like Reggie and Mike and Shirley and Lou. New people. Uh, originally from Poland and straight off the boat. I was 20 when I came here. I was born in Wrocław, which used to, after the war, which was Breslau before the war. My parents survived in Russia came back to Poland. I lived there for 20 years. So I went to a Jewish school 
and we had from first grade till I graduated from high school, I was in a Jewish school. We were not allowed to learn Hebrew. So we had Yiddish starting in second grade until you graduated from high school. We had one hour a day, like foreign language, Yiddish. And we had to study um, the literature, poetry, the way they taught us Jewish history. Well, we had once a week, starting in fifth grade, Jewish history class, but we were not allowed to learn the religion. So they taught kind of the religion like the, the old history. <laughs> Um, I speak, I don't speak Yiddish very well. I can read and write because I went to school. My parents spoke Yiddish. I understand everything, but I have a hard time speaking. I came here when I was 20. The last Jews of Poland, they kicked us out. Do you speak Polish? I speak oh. Polish fluently. I read and write. Uh, and what I've year been, you, what year and I've been friends from? with her since she came. We were at each other's weddings, Reggie and I. Oh, um, what did the, what did the uh, non-Jewish kids take in school when you were taking Yiddish? This was a totally, so when the Jews came back, majority of the Jews that were in Wrocław, right after World War II in 1945, 46, majority of Jews that survived Holocaust survived it in Russia. Um, most of Americans don't probably realize that 70 to 80 percent. So they started coming back from the east and they stopped in Poland to look for families. Right, that's what right. Um, that and my yeah, mother's what? and mother's uh, story was the same. Right. Yeah, can, can you tell me what year you came to America from Poland? Uh, when they kicked us out in 1968. So okay. we were, so this was, and to answer your question, question this was a totally Jewish school when the Jews came back from Russia they started to establish this try to establish their life and they opened businesses before it became totally socialist and schools and this was Rotswaf had to the very end a Jewish school and in Lodge there was another one in Warsaw it wasn't allowed there were before were Jewish schools, but there were totally, Polish kids were not allowed to come to our school. So this is a whole piece of history I never heard before. Right, can people say, don't know it. Can you say that Poland kicked you out in 60s? Oh, yeah. so, so they were, by 19, so what happened is Poland was kind of closed, you couldn't immigrate. In, in until about 47, 48, the Jews that came from Russia, there were a lot. There were 200, probably 1,000 Jews that survived there, majority yeah. or 250. Um, they came and they kept on going to Germany and out to the West. Right. Uh, the ones, and then, and then they closed the board. So my whole, my mother's side of the family survived and two of her sisters, they all went to Russia went to Israel and my mom and her sister were going to go with their husbands there to Israel too. But the two sisters said, no, 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 wait. It's very hard. Don't come yet. We are in tents, no jobs, whatever. Poland closed the borders and then they only reopened them in 1956. Yeah, that's when my... Uprising. I had an aunt that lived in Warsaw and that's when she got out in 56. Right. My went, husband, who passed away now, um, got out in 57, I think. So, and then they me. closed the borders again. Oh, wow. And they did not reopen them until in 68 Poland had problems, 67. And they blamed it all on Jews. There were 30,000 Jews and Nothing changes at the time, but it was our fault. Anna, Anna, what what were the Jews being blamed for? And when you said they kicked us out, what do you mean? So in '67, there's they started. There were starting student strikes 
this is before Solidarity was another 10 years. Um, and in major city, Wrocław was a major city. Uh, Lodz, Warsaw had big student strikes. And I guess the government was afraid. Read about the March 1967 problems or 1968. And I guess the government was afraid that the workers will also join in the strikes. It was a nationalist issue. And they reverted to the old script. They, they, wherever you turned, you said, they didn't call us Jews, they called us Zionists. It's the Zionist fault. Zionists did. don't listen. And the head of the government said that we are the fifth column. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. the term. Yeah. And if we want to, that we are uh, beholden to Israel, not to Poland. We were, on our papers it said, nationality Jewish, it didn't say nationality Polish. Even my dad's family went back, I traced it now to 1700s in Poland. Anyway, people started losing jobs and everything belonged to the government. So how do you survive when you can't work? And they opened the borders and they said, you wanna leave, leave. And you would lose a job, the, door were, the doors were open, what do you do? You leave. So most of my friends from my Jewish school, most of the people left yeah. um, to, I have friends in the, the ma major countries were Israel, United States, Canada, Denmark, and Sweden, plus France, Germany, oh, Australia, uh, China, even Hong Kong. We have reunions in Israel. There was supposed to be one this year, but it got canceled, obviously. And people come of the Polish Jews, the young, quote, <laughs> the, survive, the children uh, of survivors. And uh, that's the story. And I, and I can Thank you so much for sharing with us. And next time you're going to tell the whole story in Yiddish. Who else is new with us tonight? I would like to ask her, what language did she speak when she came to America? What languages? I yeah. speak no, what, what, one language. When you came from Poland, you were 20 years old. What, did, what language did you, did you speak? English. No, I, I know. I took English in college and in, I didn't finish college. I finished college here, but I had English in high school and in college. But if you ever took a foreign language, in school, you speak, what, 100, 200 words? So I learned English here. Well, you speak very beautifully. You speak better than me, and I was born here. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I say something? I, Anna, I always remember speaking English with you since I met you. I did so. not speak. I, I had to stay a year. I couldn't go right back to school. I stayed. We came in 68. I had to wait in October. So I, I went you, to school a year I later. Met you in I met you in 70, yeah. 69. Because I didn't know, Eng I really didn't know English, not very well. <laughs> okay, so who else is new this evening? First timer. Let's see a hand, who's the first timer? Jerry. Jerry? Jerry? Yep, that's me. All right, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and can you do it in Yiddish? <laughs> <laughs> Ich habe gewesen geboren du in Toronto, Kanada oh. in uh, 1973. Wow. Uh, ich habe gewesen, uh, ich habe gelernt uh, Jiddisch uh, von meinen uh, uh, Seiden und Bube. Sie haben gekommen von Russia, aber sie haben nicht gedacht, uh, sprechen Russisch. So I have only spoken Yiddish. My my mom and Tata have been they have had a a store as a convenience store. I don't know if it's in Yiddish. And they have been working sixteen hours, sixteen hours a week. And they have been read by my Zayden Bube. So I have learned Yiddish. Start. 
Then I have given a jingle, I have gegangen instead of to Cheder, uh, I have gegangen to a school which has the Morris Winchewski School. I have not known as I was a kid, as I was a communist, but now I know as they were communist. There I have not learned, I have not learned Hebrew. Hebräisch starten. Ich habe gelernt Jiddisch. Und als ein Kind, ich habe gekannt, lernen, lesen, die jiddische Journal, die, die Forwards. Und äh, das ist so, also, als ich habe gewinnt, äh, gelernt Jiddisch und ich habe gehalten es bis jetzt. Ein bisschen zu brauchen, aber es ist so, ich, ich kann sprechen. Und, und mein, I have, when I have, my wife, when she had read, she had had the same, young height we we. Her parents have given from Poland. They have they have not spoken Polish, nor Yiddish. And she had also learned Yiddish in the home. Nicht so viel, viel es geht wie hier, aber sie hat gelernt Jiddisch. Die hat gesagt, kennst du, ich weiß nicht, wie man das sagt in Jiddisch, wenn du willst, dass du jemanden schwörst oder du sagst etwas. Schelten, du willst schelten. Schelten, das ist ein Schelten. Das ist das Wort. Also, wir wollen schelten, damit mein Weib nicht auf gesucht, wo soll es wachsen wie ein Zimmer mit dem Kopf und Dreh. Ja, ja, ja. Das war der favorite one. Ja, right. The face I meant. Jerry, that given. Jerry, he off and void him, then the key off and void him. Wer ist given the store for deine family? What? Jerry, is your son? Wer ist given the store in Toronto? Uh, of Queen Street. Geschäft. The Geschäft is of, of Queen Street, Queen and Bathurst. Uh, did you, you have a son named Mike? Mike? Er hat das Sinn. Wir haben many of Mike. Mike what? <laughs> Mike Grammar. Mike no. Grammar. No. Okay. No, Mike Grammar? Yes, yeah. this is my kind. My yeah, I, I met I met you at the house when he had his wine blowout a few years ago. Uh, yes, that's yeah. right. And, this and is my zine. You recommend my zine is Michael Grammery. That's right. Yes. Yeah. You recommended oh, yeah. A, a, a Yiddish book to me, which I was able to get a hold of finally a couple of months ago. Uh huh. All right. Excuse us. Hold <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, week. Jerry, my uh, father. Who, uh, uh, who am I uh, talking to? Who's uh, Dan Newman? Dan Hammer. Oh. Dan Hammer? Yeah. Mir Hobbin Hammer und Grammar. Hammer and Grammar. Dan Hammer. Well, you zoom that you have to speak to the dear. I'm going to send the note to Mike later. Uh, oh, Jerry, I, I missed it. Where are you? V. Boynsky, yes. I live in yes, my place. Yes, you're going in Toronto. Or in a, it, it's a suburb. I don't know how to say it's a suburb. It, it's, it's Haste Thornhill. Yeah. Thornhill. Uh, Jerry? Uh, you can't uh, Thornhill. Yeah. Mike, did you want to be recognized, Blazer? My vab is from Toronto. They will bring the cafe. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I do a lot of live in, in Toronto, in, uh, yes. I, I lived in Toronto in the 50s. I was born in Hamilton. Woo. Yeah, but I moved, I moved up to Toronto. <laughs> I lived um, off Eglinton, in Ca on Castlewood. Oh, yes. Uh, the Yiddish zone. <laughs> I can't understand the English. I understand the English. I understand the English. I understand the English. I have to inspire the English. I can't understand the English. Have you gone to school? What school have you given me? I've 
went to uh, grammar school Allenby. In the synagogue. Allenby. Or synagogue. Shul, shul. Mishal synagogue, a shul. No. Yeah. No, synagogue. What synagogue did you belong to oh, at Bathurst and Castlefield? Afterwards. It was all Cast in, I'm trying to think. Um, it's been over 50 years. I can't remember. Sorry. 60 years. It, Beth Sedek, Beth Sholem, Holy Blossom. Beth Sholem, she said. Yeah. Beth Sholem, okay. Clanton Park. So where no, you that's too far. So where did you uh, where did you live when you were growing up, Jerry? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you. <laughs> I lived at first. I lived at uh, the Queen and Bathurst, yeah. and then Oakwood and St. Clair, yeah. and then I moved. When I got married, after we got married, we moved to Thornhill. That was there was no Jews in Thornhill. The closest Jew was. Uh, at Bathurst Manor, which was five miles away. And yeah, now it's all Jewish. It's all Jewish. <laughs> yeah. the, the, thing is, you know, the interesting thing is, there's a, there's a division in Thornhill. Yeah, but it's big. East of Young Street, there's a so main street do... called Young. Yeah. East of Young, there are no Jews. West of Young, that's the biggest Jewish population in Canada. Yeah. Wow. I, tell, I live what I call on the West Bank. I live on the east side of Yonk. <laughs> so, for the record, folks, somebody, somebody said something before about the word uh, for for suburb. It's Forstadt. The Forstadt. Uh, Forstadt. Okay. Jerry, my nefeta store of Winona in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had a convenience store on Winona. Yeah, near the Shari Shemaim. Yeah. That's where I went. To, that's where I went when I started going to Cheder. That's where I went to Cheder. Was the Shari Shemaim? Jerry, did you pick Steinberg? Me? Steinberg was his name. Um, Chaim Steinberg. Jerry. Yes. Parents come from Europe. I'm sorry. Your parents come from Europe. Yes, my father came from Czechoslovakia. So did my father. And my mother, my, came mother. From, my mother came from what was then Russia, but really it's now the Ukraine. She came from a little state just outside, that was a suburb of Kiev called Rezhyshchev. I well, actually looked it up on so the Google, wonderful, there is a Rezhyshchev. Let, let, <laughs> let me interrupt if I may. So the wonderful thing about the Yiddish Alive is you're making contact with people and we have the ability to... Uh, uh, give you the uh, each other's phone numbers that you can continue on with these conversations uh, after the uh, the sessions are over or during the week, whenever is good for you. So if you want to talk to Jerry, uh, Mike Mills will be happy to uh, get you guys in contact. Thanks. And you, you, you all have my uh, email address. You have my phone number. You can text me and I can make the contacts. We're, we're not going to send out the whole distribution because we've got about 100 people on the distribution list. And, oh. you know, they didn't all agree to be, you know, to have their name distributed. We just use that for these meetings. But I'd be glad to make a contact for anybody if you just text me or call me or uh, email me. Where is Shirley? Great. Shirley, well, I'll, it's a... The two of us had a uh, COVID shot. We're in the trial. Oh, and uh, wow. I think she's having a reaction to it. She's ha been having an upset stomach for the last couple of days. And apparently that's one of the side effects. I had a real sore arm for a few days. Mm. But I don't know. I may have just gotten the, uh, uh, the salt water and she may have gotten uh, the actual thing. Although a, a doctor friend of mine said that he thought that they would not do separate, you know, in the same, you know, husband and wife, but I don't know. So she's, she's got an upset stomach and she's taking it easy. Mike, what hospital did you go to? No, and, and here, here in town, one of the clinics was offering it. And now the, that was the Moderna, oh. Moderna, the Harry, Moderna was offering Harry. it. And then apparently MUSC is doing the one with, uh, Oxford and, uh, I forget the name of the company that's doing AstraZeneca. Yeah, so they're doing that. They're looking for people. And uh, a friend of ours signed up 
you know, we told them about it. They signed up like the end of last week, the day or so after we did it. And they took them like two days later. So they're still looking for people. They didn't take me. Reggie? <laughs> yeah. No, I applied. Something? They didn't take me because I have a, a, a surgery I have to have. So they don't. Yeah, wanna... they, they, they look at your medical history and, and, and you know, what, what kind of risk. Hope well. We're all counting on you. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. So did we last week we uh, left off and we missed you, Al, because I know you've got a lot of recipes and foods and goodies. Uh, I have a good uh, one. All right, let's let's hear from Reggie. What can you I tell have to a us? Good one that when I tell people this recipe, they look at me like I'm crazy, but it's delicious. It's a potato pickle soup. Oh, it's a Polish soup. Is that what it is? A Polish soup? Oh it's, yeah. It's, I thought it was Russian. It's, it's like cut up potatoes, and then towards the end, you cut up a, a, a few dill pickles, put it in, and then you add a um, sour cream with an egg yolk, and you mix it together, and you make sure the water isn't boiling because it'll curdle, and it's delicious. You know, I tell people, they look at me like, ugh, but when they taste is, it, even my grandkids like it. Is it a cold soup? No, it's hot. Hot. It's a Pol Hot. typical Polish, uh, uh, like farmer's soup. Really? My is mother a, would make it with is it a kosher pickle. <laughs> yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. What kind of pickle? A kosher pickle or cucumber? Uh, uh, no, a dill pickle. Just a kosher dill pickle. A like, you know, pickle. like olive, uh, mouth olive dill pickles. And Not just cut it in. How about katamta? No, I think, no, I wouldn't try the cup. That's too sour. Too sour, that's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but so, I'm saying for the soup. So, so Reg, it's, Reggie, it's Reggie, really good. Reggie, next, oh, next time we see you, you, you know, I, I don't know if you know about my pickles, but I've been working on a recipe for kosher. Shirley beer. told me I need to taste them. Yeah, so I, I put up, I put up, let's see, six, six gallons last week. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, oh. you know, my, Faye wants some, and everybody wants some. I want some. People, I, give, I, give, I give them half gallons. So anytime you come over, ask for my pickles. I think they're the best. Uh, I'll stop over tomorrow. <laughs> where, where Why are you, where are you doing you? dill, sour, half sour? What are you making? They're, 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 they are garlic, kosher dill, but wow. spicy. I throw, I throw in a couple of real hot peppers in, too. Ooh. So they're, oh, very, they're, they're very garlicky, and they're very spicy, and... They got a little bit of a zing, but you know, I think there, there's one Bubby's Pickles from California. I think it's the best that you can buy. That's my favorite. Better than that. Okay. Because Bubby's I love. My... I'm better than Bubby's. Believe me. Not better than my Bubby, but better than <laughs> Bubby's. Where, my... where do you live? Where do you live? <laughs> uh, Austin, South Carolina. Oh you ever down God. here? I'll... How will I get it here from New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Pickle know. Express. <laughs> you can send some out. I they, have, they, have to be they have to be refrigerated, though. I can't. They're they're not. They're not. Uh, uh, I, I don't put any preservatives in them or anything like that. That ruins them. You know, I'm throwing out a question out there. You know how when you grow up at home, you grow up with every holiday there's certain food, and I remember there for Shavuos. My mother would make something with, I, I'm not, that's why I'm asking if anybody ever heard of it. She would boil water, have raisins in it, and it was kind of sweet, and then she would take an egg and open an egg inside, so the egg would come out kind of whole, and it was like sweet with raisins and something. Anybody ever heard of that? No. no. Wow. Wow. We just I, I have no, I, I don't remember, I, I, I used to love it. I have no idea how she made it. Did she use so, noodles at all? No, it was, please. Did she use noodles? No, like it was like in boiling, she would boil it. And that it was like a poached egg on and put sweet an egg water. in it. And that was for Shavua? That was for Shavua's, yeah. I've been looking for that recipe for 30 years since she passed away. <laughs> I can't find it. This was the problem all around with our grandmothers and our mothers. We thought they were going to live forever, and we yeah. never 
wrote the recipes down. And so many of them work, you should excuse me, this is a legitimate word, on the shit system that you will right. now shit, for those of you that don't speak Yiddish, is to right. pour a solid, not a liquid. A liquid is the geese, but a solid is the shit. See, shit the bisomer, shit the bisomer, shit the bisomer. That's how I cook. Shit that My I daughter did. gets very it's upset because I don't measure. I just put in. We were in college, my wife and I, and one of my friends, Gary Hobish, I remember this day, he was coming up on Hanukkah, and he said to her, so how do you make latkes? I have to use my hands for this. She said, well, you think about so many potatoes and so many onions, and you put about that much. <laughs> and he's looking like she's got six heads with the matzo milk. And I can tell you it's four eggs. <laughs> He's saying, he's, what, what are you kidding me? <laughs> That's how you do it. That's why we did this book. Shirley told me you talked about it. Oh, it's um, a great book. And I and I sent out in the in the uh, in the meeting notes from last time. I sent out the uh, a link to if if you're interested in purchasing it. We it's very expensive because it's not. Published. There are not many. They're not. They're custom made, right? Right. My blubber flag mach and mama liga. And I oh, can't liga. find a good recipe for it anywhere. You can it, you could follow us on the Shirley, package, but it's not ask right. Shirley. Shirley knows. She's her mom is Romanian. So is my, my great father. grandmother made Mama Liga. Oh, I miss it so much, the real McCoy. The what is, what, is, mama, what is Mama Liga? What is it? it it's and like it's a mush, but it's made from cornmeal. It's kind of grits. It's like cornmeal grits. soup with sour cream in it. People will know. call it polenta who don't know, but it's not oh, yeah. really polenta. <laughs> it's Romanian. Right. 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 Now, I know that Elaine Tesler is a wonderful <laughs> cook. You know that what, Joe? I didn't hear. That you're a wonderful cook. You Thank want to you. share any of your... Uh, Jewish recipes with us? I really don't have any of those kinds of recipes. Everything you eat at my house is good, but I don't, <laughs> <have any. laughs> I don't have any family recipes, you know, recipes. Elaine, where do you live? I live in South Carolina. Oh, yeah. In Charleston. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Everybody lives in South Carolina. Yeah, North who Carolina. knew there were so many Yiddish speakers in Charleston? Yeah. It's like amazing. Yeah. Oh, you're well, Northerners. <laughs> uh, we in the in its heyday, you could hear as much Yiddish as English. Really? Wow. Right, Betty? I, yeah, I hey. bet you, uh, what's the main street? King, 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 King street, street was Yiddish Street, huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Joe, I have a question for you. When you make, uh, uh, Mary Jo, we make kefilte fish together. We ground up fish. Did you get your recipe from your mother? Did you write it down, Joe? Or you do a bissel of do and a bissel yeah, of do, and they give the bissel a taste and to see if it's good or not. Yeah, no, the the, the shit the rind is, is the special <laughs> ingredient. Get the uh, Rachel the on Beth Israel they, cookbook, and my grandmother's gefilte fish is in there, and there's none any better. <laughs> I don't know. My wife is really good. Makes I don't know if you yeah. can have a cook off a kefilte fish. I've been making it for a long time. This is like I have to tell you where to get your fish. That's a challenge. The dark essence The Zisig kefilte fish is the best. Yeah, I I I make I make I make the Polish fish zisa, but but you know my when I yeah. What happened? Sorry, go ahead. What happens is I taste the fish. Raw. Me too. Yeah, and, me too. And, and, and I remember my mother said, don't swallow it because you'll be eating raw fish. Of course, she didn't know about sushi. So at that time, <laughs> you know, now, now I eat raw fish all the time. But at that time, I would taste all that stuff. And she said, spit it out. Just get the feeling of it. And that's how I make you filter fish. So I do the same thing yeah. when I used to make it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I would never swallow it. I'd spit it out. Right, right, right. right. You no, know, there is a line of demarcation where yeah. on to the east, to the Here west, at sugar, to the west, the more towards okay. Russia. I, really? 
Yeah. I'm holding well, up yeah. I'm holding up the gefilte fish map. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's the line of demarcation and, and the map is actually I think in Yiddish, English and Yiddish. And see. uh yes, one side is sweet and one side is not sweet. Right. How do you right. Know that? It depends okay. where you're from. You make it sweet or not. Right. So <laughs> yeah. So I'm a Galicianer, so of the, course it's sweet. We all think of Finn in this map. I didn't know that. Yes. Ruth, yes. they're yes. asking yes. where did you find the map? Oh, I well, I knew that it existed, so I just quick Googled Gefilte fish map, and the, and it goes right <laughs> through Lvov, which is where uh, uh, where my mother is from, right near there. Isn't that and Russia, Lvov? Lvov, it was, it was Poland then. Now oh. it's uh, now it's Ukraine. Okay. Now it's called Lviv. Lviv. I didn't know that. So Ruth, your, your, your uh, job for next week is to be able to put that up so we can all get a copy of it. Okay. <laughs> I'll write that down. <laughs> now Ruth gets an extra. <laughs> so Ruth, what happens if you cross they, they the line? What happens if you cross the line? What if you cross the line? Apple cake. Oh. Me. 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 The Russian kids. Yep. No. Kids with mom. No. Nine. Yeah. My wife makes apple cake. No raisins. Russian kids. You know, Anna found the cookbook. It was written by three. Are they Polish sisters, Anna? Ukrainian. Ukrainian sisters, and in this cookbook is the filter fish, the apple cake, like my mother made. Linces, everything that we grew up with is in this cookbook from Ukrainians. Jews, Jews lived in Poland, Ukraine. That was the uh, the pale. And basically our food, I have this book. It's also, it was published on the same website that we did ours. And most of the Jewish food is, is taken from the Russian, Polish. I mean, they lived there for hundreds of years. Mandelbrot you know, you know, uh, and strudel, strudel with apple. Yeah. Oh, apple yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. With, but right. but if you want to find some old Jewish recipes that you don't have from your mother, it's in this book, I'm telling you. The apple cake is exactly like my mother's. It was amazing. And what's the name of it, Reggie? Anna knows it, Anna. Go oh, bring it. Hold on. It's a huge book, but it's got every, I mean, it's amazing. It's got noodle kugel. It's got everything in it. Can, can you see the map? Is it showing up on your oh, screen? Yeah. No. What is that? That's the no, map. But I don't know else. Uh, we a man. see your email. We see a picture of a guy. Yes. Yeah. No, that's, it's, it's, no, you don't want to show that, Mike. You Mine looks like a list. Oh, then I got the wrong uh, one. Uh, wait a minute. How much is the book? <laughs> Anna, you bet. Well, she's getting it. It's expensive. I think when she bought it, it was like sixty dollars for the oh, yeah. book, wow. but it's amazing. That's it. There's the map. Wow, that's the map. Huh? That's the map. The map. The map. And it goes that's right that. through Lviv. Lviv. That's right. Well, I know. My father was here. My mother. I was in Gyor in Hungary. Anna, do you find it yet? She's still looking. Here she comes. Yeah, no, I, I had to go to the kitchen. It's the best cookbook. So it's, can you see? It's yeah. Legacy of Four Cooks. It's recollections of Ukrainian home cooking. They are, they are Ukrainian. They are not Jewish. And her name is... Yaroslava Johnson, but wait a minute. I'll tell you how to find it. You find it on Blurb. No, it's called... It, is that the book you're referring to that you all... The uh, one, can you can, that's the yeah. Ukrainian book, and it has so many, it literally has gefilte fish. They call it, so I can find it. It's Show a picture on of the apple cake too. 
Uh, Here's the book is it, of fish. Wow, is it kosher? Is the book, uh, is it a kosher No, cookbook? they are not Jewish, they are Ukrainian women. Uh, That's okay. why I was so shocked that so many of our foods are Ukrainian <laughs> or Polish. And Anna, no. Anna, did, Anna, did Shirley ever tell you the story about when we went to dinner in Warsaw and we went on the menu, they gave, they gave us the translation menu and on the menu was stuffed fish shoe style. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing that was funny was, was they gave us this crock that looked like this white stuff and we asked, well, what's this? And they said, it's schmaltz. Oy. Wow. <laughs> so. Oh, Poles love schmaltz. You know, a Anna, you said something very interesting. I was born in Poland also, and I've been yeah, back what there. What city? Uh, well, I was born in Danzig, uh, so it's the free city of Danzig. Right. right. Okay, but, but because my father was from Poland, you know, it's okay. But what's interesting, going back a number of times, so I was just back there in January. My whole family is blonde and blue eyes, my, my father's side, all of us. I walked the streets and I said, it reminds me of my own family. How is it possible? We're so Jewish, we're so kosher. All these people look like they could be, and what you said is interesting. We, we were there for 200 years. God knows what they all did, you know? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, my, my husband had a theory. He said, it's do, he was blonde and blue eye, you know that. Um, it's the rapes during pogroms. Yeah. You know, maybe. And, and, and that's why most of the Eastern Ashkenazi Jews are light. I was blonde and oh. hazel. My grand, my daughter, well, now she's darker. But that's basic. We think, who knows? You know, you're right. Because I felt very funny being there. Because I recognized myself <laughs> among all these people. <laughs> so it's funny. But Reggie, here is the apple cake. That's oh, look at, ours. Who wanted that's somebody want to, Joe? You wanted a picture of an apple, apple cake. Look, Joe. Oh wow! Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's, 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 it's a good. It's combo. delicious. The rest of my daughter makes it now. It's delicious. Kanish essence food. With Russian kiss, you gotta have the Russian, Russian kiss. Yes. No, I don't put Russian kiss in. Kanish essence. Oh, you're not making it right. That's. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna make it. Everybody. I'm gonna bring you a piece, and you'll see. Well, you know, at the end, maybe at, at, in a year, we should have like a party. People should start. Right. I don't bake, but I love to eat. <laughs> That's how our book came around. This is the book that you talked about. We were playing Maj. Uh, did Shirley tell the story how it came about? A little bit, yeah. yeah. She told yeah we, we and people were saying, "Oh, did you eat this?" No, I forgot. My mom used to make it. We don't remember. And so we decided to have a party and bring the recipes that are, we remember mm -hmm. and cook. And we had a big party, and it was great. It was nice. Talking <laughs> about cooking and mothers. So my mother, uh, you know, the war broke out when she was 14. Anna, so right? She was not cooking okay. till she, after the war, and uh, she um, really didn't know how to cook, and she picked it up by herself from memory, all the stuff they used to eat, which was mostly kartoffel, right? <laughs> A lot of right. But uh, uh, I don't know how she picked it up. She, be she became a very good cook and baker, and I think from the, we lived in Israel until I was 12, and she, I think the neighbors over there, uh, you know, used to share all kind of recipes, but my mother, I remember uh, talking about the fish, she made it from scratch, uh, the field kind and the, you know, the stuff. Stuffed. Yeah, and, uh, and then when my kids were little here in Cleveland, she used to make uh, gefilte fish from chicken, from ground chicken. And my kids thought they were eating gefilte fish all the years, and then when they found out it's chicken and, and not really gefilte fish. They never ate really re regular gefilte fish again. They just wanted the chicken gefilte fish. She made it the same thing. She made it sweet and you know, just that whatever she did, she made it, you know, like you thought you were eating fish. It tastes like, like for some reason. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, she, she made, she baked like a blueberry uh, cake and apple cake and lekach, you know, the best ones. And I mean, she was, 
a, a great a great baker and uh i don't have I'm, a I, I'm getting i'm getting so hungry <laughs> you know i have to go down and eat something but i have no no cakes in the house Anna, did fair. she make challah also yeah yeah absolutely and i used the whole everybody makes fun of me because whenever i ate it i would used to say wow look at that texture you know that was, look at that texture because she, she really made great challah she made kreplach tzimes uh, my uh, mother did too same thing compote you know whatever you you know all the all the all the, all the things my grandmother used to you know make. i'll, I'll say words. it in yiddish yedif afratik for shabbos make a hot uh Kompot. Ma mitik of mach kompot. Jede fratik. Metala, jede fratik. And we had something that was my favorite because whenever we, I got a sore throat, my mother made me a name it ziker, which she took an egg yolk and put a lot of sugar in it and, you know, mixed, mixed it up. And I love to always say I have a sore throat. That's what I got. Uh, yeah, my, we used to call it goggle boggle. We call it a muggle goggle. Memories. I suggest that you can make it with milk. Reggie, I suggested it to my granddaughter, and my daughter-in-law says, "Raw egg, never <laughs> forget." <laughs> this is day, day, I will work. not drink milk because my grandmother made me that muggle goggle. Every <laughs> And I would throw up and throw it down the sink every <laughs> you know, My mother used to Brooklyn. make pitta milch. She would take, when you had a sore throat, she would put a little chocolate in it, milk with butter. Uh, oh, it would yeah. help for a cough. It was called pitta milch. Yeah. Did it work? We ate a lot. Well, actually, I liked it. It was good. Yeah. Well, well the non-Jews, well, the non they use milk and, and honey. They warm up a glass of milk with honey in it. Oh, yeah. It's true. My mother did butter. I don't honey is Let me tell you. Oh, the the if you had a fever with it, it was the egg and the milk and the honey all, you know, heated up like you were drinking coffee. And then a shot of brandy put in. And then oh, wow. they put you in the bed and they put the covers, biscuit, and zoi. And you slept for about four hours. And when you woke up, you thought you went to bed because the fever broke. You sweated out everything. They had to change you completely. And then you felt like a million bucks. So that was the fever with it. You had the, the, the brandy also. When all, uh, when, all else failed, when all else failed, then they gave you a Christian. You know, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. What's that? What's that? A what? A Christia from the English clister pipe. It's an enema. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Did anybody have cupping? In yeah, cupping? sure. My father, they do yeah, banken. We call them banken. Banken. Bankes. Yep. Bankes. 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 Oh, I was just that, that, that was also, that was also a Yiddish expression. The healthy toite bunkers. Yeah, that's that's, that's, my, mother. that's what my way, mother said all the time. Those health as I be toite bunkers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to get bunkers. I, I remember, by the way, in the museum in New York City, in the Holocaust Museum, they have an exhibit of bunkers. And, and I was there uh, talking, and the, 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 uh, the guy, the guy, wasn't sure exactly how it's used. So I told him, take a match, you well, know, because we, because we, that's all we had. Take a match and take the air out of it and poof, put it right on your back. And, and it sucks. No, and they, put, they put spirit in it or something into the bunkers, I think. That, and that's different up. ways, but, but what Tova has the general, that's the main way. Yeah, I, just well, I remember, I remember having it because when we used to go to in Europe to a communal shower, you that. knew who had bunkers that week. I used to like the bunkers, my father did it. I don't know, but, I liked it. <laughs> By the way, for those who don't know, the whole point of the bonkus is it creates a suction. Right. So whatever was making you sick, this would suck the blood. Blowing it out. out. Yeah. Right. So saying it's helping via Titan bonkus, right. it would help like cupping a corpse too late. <laughs> I didn't know. I never realized that. Hannah, where did you live in Israel? Hannah, where did you live in Israel? 
Uh, I, uh, when, I, it, uh, when I was a child, I lived in uh, Derech Yafo, Tel Aviv, which, okay. was, which was an area, uh, probably like the southern tip of Tel Aviv, right by Yafo. So, the, and uh, that's where I lived. <laughs> wow, okay. We lived in, in this uh, neighborhood of, uh, of, <laughs> of like Srifim, you know what it means? Like yeah. huts. It was yeah. a big neighborhood, and the kids would run around all day and, 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 get in, and go on the sand dunes and in the fields, oh, and we had a, a great time. We were never home. <laughs> I lived in Haifa. They don't have them up there. Yeah. So today, you spend a lot of money at a high-end spa to get bunkers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They, they still have, are you joking? Are they still have bunkers now? No, they have hot stones now. They've got hot pots, they've got scent, scent. You can, you I mean, still, you spend a lot of money for the, the old treatments. Yeah, you can still buy them in Israel. They sell them in Israel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They really? So they call it cupping. It's cause you go to yeah. stars and they'll do it. Yeah. And to, to when my, mother, my mother was sick many years ago. And she kept saying, oh, I need bine because it's the only thing that's going to help me. So my aunt from Tel Aviv shipped her a whole set. <laughs> does it really, does it work? Or is it just a booba mice? Uh, who knows? <laughs> well, the, 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 the She eventually did get better, but who knows what, how she got better. So the explanation is that it brings the blood towards the surface. And if you have, let's say, some something with lungs, usually cough and stuff, it comes towards that organ and it's supposed to help. You know what? I think it's a great business to start here in America. <laughs> you know, as, as an alt alternative. Yeah, for it. You can it's call like it the Bankers of America. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You, oh, can cool. America. you can sell them out on Amazon. Don't start it up. Al, Al, says me, Bus. Al. We don't Bus? live far away. I could give it. To, I could give you bunkers. <laughs> I think we have a setup in the attic. I think we have a setup. Hey, this could be a, a we, this could be a new fundraiser for FJMC. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> no, no, no. Listen. Yeah, write that if, down there. Look, if Ecu yellow if candles, bunkers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Look, I haven't heard the word cholent yet. If acupuncture, if if acupuncture yes. works, so why I not know. bunkers? Nobody's talking about cholent. I was talking about cholent. 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 My my oh, wife's yeah. grandmother yeah. Yeah. owned a bakery, and on Friday afternoons, people <laughs> would group them. They're stolen. They're open to stay on overnight. And they all came back after school mm -hmm. on Saturday to pick it up and take it home and eat it. Yeah. Right. Where was this one? That, a lot of places. That, this was oh, <laughs> New York. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Carrie Glass, whose parents in my town, Carrie Glass's parents owned a bakery in Brooklyn. And I believe he said back in the early days that they did that. They did that. They put the... Uh, Early uh, Friday afternoon, they put it in. They let it sit in the oven of the bakery overnight. After school, they'd stop and pick it up on the way home. Yeah, my uh -huh. mother told me. Yeah, this is the same grandmother. This is the same grandmother whose bathtub was filled with live fish uh, to make a filter. Oh, my my uh, my mother-in-law used to do that. Your mother-in-law used to do that. She would go down to this uh, area. In Toronto, uh, where the all, all the Yiddish stores, the Yiddish uh, grocers and bakers and butchers, and she'd buy a, a carp, but it was a live carp, and she would take it home and put it in the bathtub, and it was float, or, float around. Uh, she, made, she made a vegetarian out of my wife. You, you know, you know, uh, you know. Not so long ago, Shirley and I lived in uh, Madrid, and, and Shirley's folks came for uh, Passover. And they didn't have anything. There was very little. There were very few Jews there. And Shirley's mother bought live fish, and she put them in the bathtub. And uh, the only problem I had was I couldn't find horseradish. They didn't know what horseradish was. I, I found it after the holiday. There was a German store. And they sold horseradish, but uh, she made the, the fish. horseradish was but right really, next. That's to called see. making it really from scratch. Somebody going for her. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm interrupting for a second. 
Unfortunately, I have to depart from this lovely group. I have a FJMC meeting yes. at nine o'clock and uh, I, I want to make sure that I show up there. So a shade of dunk for everybody who came yeah. this evening. It was good to see you all. Yeah. Al, we'll see your, you next, uh, next time. Do you want to stay Al, for a short time? Al, make sure you tell them about our new fundraising idea. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure oh, they'll love this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. By the way, night, everybody. You know, I, I have a name for it. Abyssal Abunkus. <laughs> okay. Big eat. Although I, I really do. Yeah. I like Lou's idea of uh, Bankus of America. I thought that was <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would like to finish the evening. We could, I could, we could get sued by Bank of America. Wait, wait, Lou's been trying to say something for like the last Lou, go hour. ahead, Lou. <laughs> well, I Lou. just wanted to share a, a brief story with you about in our neighborhood, one of the dogs is always amorous. And she walks, you know, walks around the street, stopping at all the houses where there are male dogs and you know, a lot of stripping going on. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I, I forgot the, the dog's name was canine a horror. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. That's, no. Was that it, Lou? That's oh, it. That's it. <laughs> Very good. That sounds like TMI. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay, I think that we are, we are at the end of our meeting. I wanted to do a song, but I think we ran out of time. So we'll, we'll catch up on that next time. Welcome to the new guest, and I hope they Thank join you. us again. And by the way, the, the term used here is called cupping. Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, Thank cupping. you for sending us the, le the links each week. Yeah. Well, people have, been, people have been sending some interesting things. You know, David sent some, something um, on, on that's the song, and Shirley sent me the... Uh, uh, Yiddish version of Hallelujah. I have a uh, an interesting poem that I found that was written by Gene Wilder in, in Yiddish. Oh, wow. send it to, That's send right. it to Send it to me if you have things that you'd like to share with the group. Send sure. it to me, and I'll send it out when I send out the uh, announcement for the next group meeting. Right. We said we said the next time we get together, we want to talk, talk about expressions used when you misbehaved and also Yiddish nicknames or terms of endearment our parents or grandparents used to use. You mean like How about if you were uh, such a good Jewish boy you never misbehaved, then what do you do? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. Thank you. Hey, good, good, night, night, everybody. good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. It was wonderful. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Tell Shirley to feel better. I will. Best I'll tell her to feel better. Best regards. Is that Mike, good? Hey, Mike, Mike, should I do it? Hey, Mike. Yeah. Do the trial? I was considering seriously. Don't worry about it. I mean, this is this is not a big deal for her. You know, it's just, no, she's, she's, she's not really she's not bad. I'll call. I'll call her and I'll give her a call. Her. She's, uh, you know, and they said that's one of the side effects they look for is an upset stomach. So. Okay. Uh, good tonight. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Devil and Anita. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.